Hi, in this video, I'm going to take you through how to perform sensitivity analysis using data table in MS Excel. For that purpose, I'm going to be using this Colgate Palmolive India model that I have in front of me. You can find this video in the link shared below. This is a quick and dirty model, so not really one of the great examples of how a DCF has to be done. But if you have to do a quick and dirty DCF, you can use this model. I'll quickly explain you the layout of this model so that when we perform our sensitivity analysis, we have some context to it. So what we have here is our income statement where we have sales and other expenses. We have modeled most of the expenses using percentage of sales. And as far as the sales is concerned, we have modeled them using year over year growth. We have income statement up to EBIT. And as far as our free cash flow is concerned, we have calculated our free cash flow using the no pat approach which means we do not have a detailed cash flow statement. We are taking this data to arrive at our valuation. So that's about the model in a nutshell. As I said, this model is available in the drive I shared below. Now, what is our objective? In our valuation, we've used a weighted average cost of capital of something like 15% and perpetual growth of 7%. These are some of the data points where we may not have great confidence in the number. Now let us say I want to understand what if my growth is not 7% what if it is 6% or what if it's 8 Same way I may be wondering about what if my weighted average cost is not 15 what if it is 14 or what if it is 16 One way to do this we can change it in our cell we can go back and look at the value but if I want a quick look at what is going to happen to my numbers under different circumstances one option we can use is the data table feature in MS Excel that's what I'm going to explain you how to do as far as data table is concerned, it is critical that the data table is in the same sheet in which the input is present. So you can't have a data table in one sheet and the input in another sheet. So let me come down and let me create an analysis section. Sensitivity analysis. See what I'm going to do here is have an analysis on target price versus VAC. We are going to first arrange the various inputs that we think are possible for VAC. We are going to input that. Which I think it can be anywhere between 13%, 14%, 15% or 16%. Let me also add one more. 17%. I think these are possible inputs for my VAC. Since these are inputs, I'm going to give them a separate color code. These are the various inputs that I'm looking for VAC. But what is it I'm evaluating? The output I'm evaluating is my target price. Now, how are we going to make Excel know this? The way we're going to do that is, in the next column heading, I'm going to link column heading to that target price. So equals, in my DCF sheet, I have this target price. That is what I'm trying to observe. I'm just coloring it differently so that we know what it is. And now what we're going to do is, I'm going to select this area I'll go to data, what if analysis and data table. This is the tool we are going to use now. Now in this we have two inputs that are being required from us, row input cell and column input cell. This is slightly less intuitive. Let me explain what these cells are. Now if our inputs are arranged in columnar format, then we'll select column input cell. The various inputs we are considering. If they are arranged in a horizontal row format, we are going to use the row input cell. In our case, as you could see here, we have arranged them vertically in a columnar format, the inputs. So I will go to the column input cell. Now what we have to specify is, these are various inputs that are there in my column, but these inputs are meant for which cell? These inputs, in our case, are meant for the weighted average cost of capital which is in cell C6. That's what we're going to link it to. So just to reiterate, what we are mentioning here is that we have inputs in the column and that input pertains to cell C6. We're going to select this and click OK. Now what we see here is a quick snapshot of the value that we would have had had we used these different assumptions. Now there are two ways to interpret this table. One way to interpret it is in terms of a range of possible values. If I think my VAC can be between 13% to 17%, that is all that's the possibilities that I think. 
then that also tells me that the fair value should be between 313 to 195. I get this range. Another way to interpret this is to see that if my VAC is increasing by 1%, then how much does it impact my share price? So if a, there is a 1% change in VAC, then we are talking about around 13% change in our fair value. That tells us how sensitive is our fair value of VAC. And that also tells us that in terms of how careful we should be in choosing assumptions for VAC. Since there's a 13% difference in target price, perhaps this is an assumption I should give extra attention to. Now, one more way we can create this data table, just in terms of appearance, is rather than the inputs being in a column, we could arrange these inputs in row format as well. So let me show an example with the perpetual growth because that is also a variable where we were not very sure. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to arrange the perpetual growth versus target price. Let me have that. And I'm going to arrange the perpetual growth in as inputs. So let me take somewhere like 5%, 7% and 9% and taking three values. You can select as much as you want. Now, when your inputs are in row format, then the, the output we're evaluating should be in the first column of the next row. By first column, I'm talking about not column A, but first column of our table. So I'm going to equate this equals 239 in my DC sheet. Keep in mind, you cannot be typing this. If you type it, it's going to be a punched in number that's going to be of no use to us. This should be clearly linked. Right. Just to give you an example, in the previous case, had I not linked it, had I typed it manually, you notice that it throws me same value. So it has to be linked. Now having linked it, what are we going to do? We're going to select this table, go to data, what if analysis, data table. In this case, the input is arranged in a row. So what we're going to do is, we're going to select this row input cell box and we're going to specify what are these inputs meant for? These inputs are meant for which cell? They are meant for cell C7. We're going to select that and click OK. And just like what we had earlier, now we see multiple outputs possible. So if it is 5%, then our target price would be 206. If it is 7, which is what we've used in our model, it's going to be 239. And if it is 9, it's going to be 294. So in both these cases, we've kept all other variables constant and we have only changed one of the variables. So in the first case, we changed the VAC and in the second case, we have changed the perpetual growth. It is also possible to simultaneously play with two variables. So that's what we're going to do now. So what I'm going to do is sometimes I want to play with both. I want to change my VAC and I also want to change my perpetual, perpetual growth and see what happens. And that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to have my perpetual growth. I'll keep it in row like what we had earlier. And I'm going to keep my VAC in column like what we had earlier. Right now, what I'm going to do is that if we look at it, the row is occupied by perpetual growth and column is occupied by VAC. So where do I link the output? So I'm going to link the output in the top left corner. I'm going to equate this to the target price. If need be, we can add some heading here so that from an end user perspective, they understand what it is. I'm going to change the angles. I'm going to see this is VAC. Align it properly so that people know that this is VAC and this is my perpetual growth. Let me merge some cells and give a heading. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to select this table. We're going to data what if analysis data table this time if you look at it we have row input as well as column input the perpetual growth has been arranged in a row format the vac has been arranged as a column input so the inputs mentioned in my row pertain to cell c7 which is perpetual growth and the inputs arranged in column pertains to vac which is cell c6 i'm going to select them click ok and now we see a table that gives us the effect of change in VAC as well as potential growth on our final fair price. So we know as growth remains constant, if VAC increases, what happens to us? 
If VAC remains constant and growth increases, what happens to the target price? Uh, keep in mind, for this table to work, it is very critical that these inputs that we are using here are punched in and in our final calculations, they flow as a link. If those numbers in our formula are not linked to the VAC, if we had typed the VAC directly into our formula somewhere else, we wouldn't have been able to perform this sensitivity analysis.